So I was showing here a particular screen under conversions, which is a way that Google Analytics can help you see how effective you're being. This screen doesn't appear here automatically unless you set it up. So let's take a brief moment to look at setting up conversions in Google Analytics. Remember at the top you have the home view, check your reports, customize, and admin. Let's go to admin. So the admin view. And then you've got columns of account, property, view. You should see goals. These are the conversion goals. So in this particular client, for yourself, you probably just have one website, so it's pretty straightforward. But for us, notice we've got all of these different accounts, clients, and properties. So for us, we just have to be sure we're in the right screen. For yourself, most likely it's no big deal. But on the rightmost column of view, you want to click on goals. We have one defined. Let me go to an example that doesn't have one, just so that you can see what it's like. Goals. Okay. So it'll be empty. It'll say new goals. You can have up to 20. Uh, we can do import from gallery or create a new one. I haven't really found it very useful to use the import from gallery, but the point of that is that people all over the world use Google Analytics. They do things the same over and over, and so someone has put together like a recipe or a macro or a shortcut for you to track conversions. And I usually don't find them that useful because they have to be so generic, you have to customize it anyway. And so I would skip the gallery. Um, if you go to New Goal, from here we have a section of Template and then of Custom. This is not the same as the previous template, but this is useful here. So under Template, what are we trying to track? What's our goal? Are we trying to track revenue? acquisitions, inquiries, engagement. So if we're trying to play, do, track revenue, this will be about placing an order. And basically most of these goals are met by a, a user usually visiting a specific page, as we'll see an example. Acquisition, that someone creates an account. Inquiry, someone goes to the contact page and so forth. Engagement, that they do something like playing a, a sound or a video or sharing. Let's say I wanted to track how successful order placement has been. If I select that one and continue, then it goes on to two. There's one, two, three. I can call this a variety of things, place an order, this restaurant is in San Diego and Los Angeles, so we further change it to be place an order in Los Angeles. And you can or organize this into goal sets and have many of these sets and track the data. But the way you prove that an order has been placed is notice the possibilities. Destination, duration, pages per screen, and event. Smart goal not available. Um, so destination. On most websites, you're going to place an order, and you go through the process of the shopping cart. And eventually, when the order is placed, it takes you to some sort of thank you screen or confirmation screen. So the way that it's confirmed that you bought that item is that you end up in a certain page, destination. So whatever steps have happened to get me to the thank you screen, that counts as a sale, as placing an order. If it takes a certain amount of time, I will be able to specify how long is that time for this goal to be complete. I can count pages per screen, or pages uh, per session, that is. If it takes seven pages to work the circuit to go through the system, and they went through all seven, that was a successful completion. Playing a video etc. So let's say it's going to be destination and the actual details are equals to begins with regular expression usually equals to for example use my screen for an app and slash thank you instead of dot website dot com slash thank you. So if I've got a page called something like uh, order placed dot html 
That's the final result of the person going through the process of buying a product. They get to that screen that says order placed. If Google Analytics sees that the person got to that page, they count it as a sale. No one should really get to the order place screen unless they placed an order. Let me get back to value in a moment. Then we've got funnel, which is are there specific steps that the person has to accomplish to get to the place order? And are they required? So let's say the first one is uh, storefront. That one is the page called shopnow.html. Then we expect the person to go to the to the cart. So that's my cart. HTML. If they did through these steps and this step and then eventually got to order placed, that's a successful completion of this goal. You can tell it to verify, it'll send some fake data, then it'll verify it. So you see, this is a way to track efficiency or efficacy, effectiveness of, of something. Uh, are people buying your product or not? And if you make these required, the person has to go through this process in order in order for it to be counted. Uh, what does verify again? You can then uh, have Google calculate if this was going to be a an attainable goal. It'll send data. It'll try to go through these steps to verify. It's very It'll test it. It'll test it, yes. If I go back to value, which is optional, funnel is also optional, uh, but value is assign a monetary value. So I wouldn't be able to do it here really because I've got so many different products. But let's say I'm selling one particular product, t-shirts, and they're all worth $10 each. So if I say that if someone completes this whole process, that was worth $10 then Google will show you've completed this many goals and it's actually earned you this much money. Does this work if you go through PayPal? No, because um, the addresses on PayPal are at paypal.com slash something. Mm -hmm. But PayPal often allows you to have a redirect screen at the very end. Mm -hmm. So if someone completes their buying process at PayPal and you set up PayPal, it'll automatically take you back to your website. Instead of it automatically just going back to the home screen of your website, you can have it go to a thank you mm -hmm. page. And that is, an, that is something that you can count. So this is one possible goal. Uh, I'm going to cancel this just to show you instead. I back it up. Instead of doing it via template, I can do custom, and it's going to be sort of similar. What's a name? How is this going to result in? Notice there's less to fill in this way. But these are conversions. These are uh, results that Google can track. And they're all based on sort of like an end result on your site. This is something that I recommend people to set up and to use on Google Analytics. You get a lot of data, yes, but then you have to take this extra step here to create these goals. So any questions on that before we move on? I'll make the note here. Set up Google Analytics goals as soon as possible to see the efficacy of your online endeavors. <coughs> Everyone's going to be a little bit different, but that's the big idea that it's a chain of events that someone accomplishes on your site. And you can set a monetary value to show again how effective it is. The, they're sort of using the, the term interchangeably. 
a conversion, which is a result, is a goal. Is a goal. Yeah. All right, so obviously there's still a lot we can look at uh, regarding Google Analytics. Um, you should browse it and, and check up on here. If You might have a screen that looks like this, a bunch of help stuff. If you don't see it, it's hidden underneath the mortar board here, this little graduation cap. I would look through these help screens and watch these little videos. There's a lot to learn about Google Analytics that can be like an, a three-week class in and of itself for so, so much that it has. But then there's a certain point that with most of my classes, I can talk in theory, but then for individual people, I have to talk to individual people because you have your own particular needs and goals of your business. So I'm going to move on from Google Analytics if there's no final questions. Mm -hmm. well, the book you recommended is long, long Analytics. Not specifically. Again, it's a little bit more in theory, but you can find all you can find the book of Google Analytics here. You know, here's all of the chapters on how to use every one of these screens. What I recommend from the book, actually, I will pull up a couple of excerpts. What the book is about. I bought the digital version of it, the Kindle version, and you don't have to have a Kindle to read Kindle books because there's the online portal to read your Kindle books. So I'm going to say here regarding Kindle books. I like them because they are uh, portable and searchable and don't need a Kindle. Use read.amazon.com. You can read all of your Kindle books there on a tablet, on a desktop. Now if you've got a if you've got a tablet or a mobile device, then download the Kindle app, the free Kindle app. And then it's most effectively set up for you to read on a device. On my laptop or desktop, like I'm going to show you right here, you can go to read.amazon.com and your whole library of books will be there and you can read them. That's what I'm saying about portable. You can read Kindle books on any device. You don't need a Kindle. And I like that it's searchable because again, with a real book, I have to go to the index and look it up there or go to the table of contents and browse pages. But in a digital book, you can do find, search for a term, and it takes you directly to the page. Yes. Back, back on our, our goal details, category, action, label, value. Effect. Well, uh, is it a quick question? Because I'm already moved on from that. Okay, well, yeah, quick. Um, if, if all I want to do, to do is to contact you, email me. It's just category would be contact, action, email me, and then that sounds about right. Yeah, we can look at it during the break. But yeah, it sounds like you're selecting the right items for contact. Thanks. So I'm going to pull up the SEO Beyond book. I'm not going to obviously show everything about the book. It's a very affordable book. You should look at, at it on yourself. But I'm going to go into a section here that I think is very valuable. Regarding um, content. goes on to talk about various things that we've talked about with more detail. Authority. Again, quality pages raise the ranking of your own page, so backlinks, good backlinks help your page. It goes on to then say uh, the opposite is unfortunately true, low quality pages, so spam sites linking to your site are bad. That's why you want to do disavow. Uh, so then it talks about uh, quality, not quantity. Uh, to be seen as a real authority, your site needs incoming links from other sites. Since the update, the author no longer recommends any types of automated link building tools. So this was an old technique that you would buy software to create more links to your site. Now it's not that way anymore. It's going to be about quality content. 
and it goes on again about um, make sure your page deserves to rank, that it's got quality content. Um, what I want to show here, ranking for your keywords. Okay, backlinking. Uh, he says, I'm sure you're concerned about building incoming links. What's the best way? Um, it's saying. The best backlinks are the ones that you get to your site are the ones you did not create. These are not backlinks from other sites where you did not request the link, nor did you have any say in the anchor text. These types are the holy grail. They're also the most difficult. So if you can't ask another website to link to you, if you can't pay another website to link to you, if you can't tell them, please use my name in the link, how are you going to get the link? The best way to get this type of link is to develop content that your visitors will love and want to share. And the chapter goes on to say various examples of co types of content to create to help you get links. Again, read, download the book to get all of the details, but I'll mention a couple of these that I like and recommend. One is infographics. So this is ideas for content to get you traffic. infographics, which are graphical representations of possibly boring topics. Visually interesting graphical representations of possibly boring information. It sounds very, very heady. Here's a tangible example. If you'd like to check this out, Pinterest.com Interest.com slash Moshe13. This is one of my colleagues, former student, web designer and developer. He's got a Pinterest account. Pinterest is a social network where people share content, generate traffic. And so Chuck has an account here, and he's doing pretty well on Pinterest. And by that I mean he's got 33,000 followers on Pinterest. So in theory, the point of a social network is you have followers, you have a captive audience. When you share something on Twitter, when you share something on Facebook, Pinterest, your followers mean people are paying attention. If you take the social media class in there, I talk about the 1% doctrine, that 1% of your followers are often the ones that are the most active, the ones that are the most real, the ones that are the most valuable. So if I've got 100 followers, 1% 1 of 100 is... One. One follower out of 100 are the ones that are really going to buy your product, read your newsletter, donate to your nonprofit. Very, very low number, I know. But again, it's very easy to give a like, to give a follow, but suddenly it's much harder to give a buy, or a donate, or a register. So 1%. That's why we're trying to get followers in social media. 1% of 33,000 is like 300 or something. So 300 possible customers, that's still great, but that's 3, 33,000 of the pool. And maybe your content is so amazing that you're closer to 25%. Well, out of 100 followers, 25% is still only 25 people. But what if you have 25 followers? 25% 25 of 25 followers is like less than 1%, rounding it up, one person again. So Chuck here seems to be pretty good at Pinterest. He's got all of these followers, so in theory, now Pinterest is very annoying that it won't let you see too much unless you log in, but he's sharing content that will hopefully get attention and people to react, to like, to follow, to buy, to hire him. He's got a section here on great web design. Um, he's got a section here on infographics. If Pinterest lets me, I can show you here. An infographic, again, is something graphically interesting. Yeah, Pinterest is really not going to let you do anything unless you sign in nowadays. I should stop promoting them. But um, it's like this. How Snapchat can expand your brand. That could be a very basic blog post that's just text. But here you can kind of see it's also full of graphics and design and it's got stats you can see something here about Snapchat as well as $50 million, whatever. That could have been a very basic, boring PowerPoint. 
a chart, a graph. But here, a graphical information item where you're getting across this information in an interesting way. how to optimize your landing page. So again, that could have been a boring blog post, but it could be a much more interesting infographic. These obviously take more effort to design. And if you're not a designer, well, this seems like a very complex thing. But you can search infographic template. You can search infographic generator infographic software, infographic maker, Vengage, free infographic maker. So you could go here, and you've probably seen these, maybe you didn't know its name, and I wish I could show you a direct one, uh, but these again are graphical representations of data. Look at this in the background here. I can see this is something interesting to look at, Google Analytics report. Instead of just boring numbers, it's designed, it has visual interest. That is one of the content creation examples. Create infographics, share them on social media, put them on your website, give them away for free. Use tools like Vengage to create them. Or simply PowerPoint. Open up PowerPoint and see what the clip art there is and put together something. This obviously takes effort to do that and not everyone needs this. Let's say I'm looking at that client about that Mexican food restaurant, Texcoco. You know, even say, well, what kind of graphic can I show off there? Something interesting and whimsical such as, you know, the history of the history of tacos. And we have to do a little research and put together a little timeline that shows here's how tacos were in pre-Columbian Mexico, and here's how they were during the rise of the Aztecs, and here's how it is in the early 20th century, and here is it in World War II. So these are interesting. You've seen them before, most likely. You might have not known their name, but you saw them. Maybe you shared them. You thought they were interesting. Well, that's content to help you get traffic. The book goes on to say a couple of other ones. I'll skip a few. Um, lists. This is one I like. Posts that include lists are the types of posts people love to share. Uh, for example, top 10 WordPress plugins on a site about building websites. Um, the four best travel destinations if you're a realtor. You know, some sort of article about what not to do when you're buying your first house. Top three list. So this is blog posts about lists. Blog posts based on lists. The number doesn't matter. Top 5, top 10, top 47, whatever. The number doesn't matter. Uh, it's just some list where you count down or you count up. You've read these. Most likely you've read a couple in a row because they're so short and interesting. And maybe you've shared them or, so, or sh shared them or someone else shared them with you and now you generated traffic by by reading it. YouTube and other video sites. So video, video traffic, video content. Much more effort than a blog post or an infographic, but uh, the new marketing. 10 second to 10 minute 
videos. You have short video tools like Vine and uh, Instagram that let you create short videos. You can go on YouTube where you, where you have no limit. You can create two minute long videos, 15 minute long videos, hour long videos. What will you create video about? Well, it's out of the scope of this class, but if you have the time, this Wednesday, in two days, I'm doing the YouTube class. It's in my social media class. Day three of the YouTube of the social media class is a focus on YouTube this Wednesday in two days. I still have space. 6 p.m. down in room 110. Uh, we're going to talk about YouTube all day long. What we can't talk about here. YouTube has been very effective for our various clients because text is nice and valuable and all of that, but what's seemed to be getting more people's attention is multimedia, video, audio, narration, commercials, all of that. And we'll spend time talking about that in that class on Wednesday. We're done. 6 p.m. 6 to 9.30 p.m. Room 110. So this chapter just goes on to give ideas about what kinds of content to create to get you attention, to get you traffic. Because this is, again, SEM. Modern SEO is not just keywords, put them on your site. That's like so basic nowadays. Notice I haven't really done that in great detail because it's not as valuable as it, as it was before. Yes, we talked about the long tail keyword strategy and all of that. What was the point of all of that? Well, if I developed a long tail keyword strategy with these keywords, best Mexican food restaurant, I, what about if I write an article about that? What if, about, if I make a short video about that? What if I put a top 10 list about the 10 best Mexican food restaurants? I figured out my keywords, and I have to use my keywords. So check out that article, and it talks about social media, blogging, Twitter, all of that. So you see it's a big ball of wax, big ball of yarn, that uh, what SEO is. It's what are you doing on your website, what are you doing out of your website, What's your content, your links, do you have your webmaster tools set up? What are you doing? Are you blogging? Are you creating content on a regular basis? In this overview of this class in three weeks, I wanted to lay the groundwork of a, of a variety of topics. And I set up the class in this sort of way that, yes, there's a lot of things floating around in this uh, solar system of concepts. We've looked at one aspect of it. I keep saying that I'm doing a blogging class and a social media class and a WordPress class. They're all related to each other, and if it was all crammed into one class, we'd have to go, like, you know, for 12 weeks. Um, but I break it up into different classes and days and such for you to plan your schedule to learn these individual concepts. So we're going to be wrapping up the main lecture in a little bit and then doing the final activity, which is... Um, a site analysis, uh, voluntary site analysis. Uh, but again, check out the, the book, and I'm obviously glossing over a lot because you have to pay for it. I'm not going to give away this book. It's not that expensive. But any general questions on these last content creation concepts we've talked about? Okay, so we'll shift gears to our final concept of uh, having the... Uh, site analysis